Good afternoon everyone. Hope all is well. So, we are going live again today with a author, a university lecturer who uh, lectures at the University of Westminster in a property raising fund for development and a business entrepreneur. So, we have got Vera who has joined us just now and here we go. Vera. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Good, good. All is well. Firstly, thank you so much for joining me on this live and uh, joining me on this mission to share the knowledge, to spread the positivity that what you've achieved in your career, in your life, sharing that with other people and to build positivity within the world that we are in. So thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Pleasure. So uh, before we move forward, Vera, if you can introduce yourself as to who you are and what is it exactly that you do? Uh, I do. I'm an entrepreneur and I do several things. Uh, mainly I'm a business uh, consultant and a strategist. And um, uh, my expertise lies in business psychology and neuroscience behind sales and marketing. <clears throat> so sort of like making uh, things click and increase sales, scale up the businesses. This is what I help my clients with uh, through obviously the power of um, system, systems, automation, uh, part social, social, media. Branding and also social media, absolutely, yes. And also, and also the mindset. And that is my, uh, one of the businesses that I do. And I also am uh, involved in property. And um, I do several bits from raising finance to my own developments. That is absolutely amazing. And you also lecture at the University of Westminster, uh, right? I do, yes. Teaching, I'm a guest teaching, lecturer. Teaching uh, so, how to deal with, teaching the, the students how to deal with property and, and, and all that. Not quite, no. I lecture uh, the master, master degree um, uh, students, some courses on, uh, on business okay. and strategy mainly. Um, so I want to take you a few years back into your childhood, sure. you know, into your teenage years. Uh, when we're all growing up as college going, school going, university going kids, we always see different careers in front of us. Like it'd be an architect, it'd be a lawyer, it'd be an actor, musician, you know, all these careers that we see our parents going through, our uncle and aunties going through, and we sort of aspire to be like them. Uh, was there a career that you aspired to be or no? From the start, you wanted to be that business entrepreneur and become a strat uh, strategist that you are today. What is it that you wanted to do when you were growing up? Well, when I was growing up, it's a funny story, actually, and I'm glad you're asking. <laughs> it's always good to go back to those memories. I really wanted to become a doctor. So I was okay. incredibly passionate about human physiology. And uh, I studied everything that you could possibly study before I would apply to medical sc school. So I would know exactly every single enzyme and what they do and hormones and muscles, absolutely everything about human body. Um, as far as I actually uh, made an appointment in a local morgue to go and actually see the whole autopsy and see how the organs look wow. in real life. But unfortunately, my parents couldn't afford uh, paying for my for my tuition. I mean, I would get a scholarship, but um, there would be still uh, some costs associated with living, uh, such as food and rent and so on. And so because of that, I, I could not afford to go to a medical school. And it was kind of like it crushed my heart um, and very, very sad times. So I promised to myself that I will do something that will make me money so that my children would have their dream come true, whatever they, they, would, they would decide to do. And that, is such, <laughs> that is such an amazing thought. I mean, uh, so because you wanted to be a doctor and you wanted to get, go into medical, I'm sure that from school to uh, up to, let's say, college or, 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 or uh, high school, you must have been very eager with studying all sorts of medical sciences. I mean, science as a subject, you've got biology, you've got chemistry, all that kind of stuff. I mean, and you studied all of that to get into a, a, a medical school. But then how was it? How did you, you mentioned that it was it crushed your heart. But how was it dealing with all of that? And, and you couldn't get in because of financial situations uh, uh, with your parents. How did you feel about that? And how did you overcome well, that challenge? 
Yeah, to be honest with you, I think I think um, I've developed a great deal of resilience as a child growing up because uh, there were a lot of hurdles to overcome as I was growing up, and so uh, it's I kind of like took it uh, as it was, and um, I always had this in me to never give up. So, never give up doesn't necessarily mean that you're not achieving your particular goal. Never give up, give up is actually go and get set yourself other goals and go for them. So that was something that I, I was incredibly blessed to understand from a very early age, and then. Um, I was quite a spiritual child as well, so I would pray a lot, and um, because of that, I, I would I would definitely put my uh, overcoming all of these issues into praying and God, which helped me a lot uh, to managing my emotions as a, as a you know during that transition. Because when you're 16, 18, 20 years old, it's you know it's th- that that period of time where you kind of like need some some sort of um, divine intervention if you wish especially going through some some difficulties and i i would definitely put it down to that so that is how i dealt you know resilience god praying and um this times if somebody uh, somebody is going through the same things i would say praying uh, praying to whatever that is that you feel feel spiritual um connection with yeah and um and um resilience uh, in terms of ego so you know ego is something that drives us back and tells us that we're unhappy but if you can look i can't about this ability to look beyond your ego and actually realize how wonderful the whole the whole life experience actually is then i think that 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 will give you that resilience and and get you down to earth to you mentioned overcome. religion and you mentioned praying to god during the hard times yeah. that you went through and i want to ask you this question i mean we all believe that whatever god does he does it for a reason yeah looking back to where you are today from where you are to where you came from do you think all of that was god sent and he did that for a reason so that you could achieve different things in life where you couldn't achieve medical you couldn't become a doctor but then you've achieved other successes in life which do you place it down to god putting it in your way to show you that there are other things in life to get to rather than just pursuing a career that you can't possibly get on with yeah uh, to be honest with you i would, uh, I would uh, let me an- answer this question uh, twofold so first of all i believe that um god has plays a great deal a great role in our in our lives but equally i believe in terms of guidance but equally i believe that we are free will free will, we have our free will as the, and this is what makes us so special right we have a free will and i i believe also that we create our own realities guided by god i think that we can create our greater realities and happier realities if we have that guidance and that connection with god but i don't think that um you know god is some, god is someone who is putting you in, in, through the hardships but equally this being said i would say that i take full responsibility for everything that has happened to me and i could not be more grateful for how my life has turned out to be and to be honest with you uh, this is something that i i had the view of even though when i was going through hardship i had a view of a better life i had a view of um, being fulfilled and happy and i think this is what kept me that belief that faith is what kept me going really but as i said you know it's both ways it's god but it's Absolutely. you can't There's blame a... god on something you also create your own reality because you do have a free will of course and uh, someone uh... where he learned where he wise told me that when you think that god has put you in a hardship or a bad situation you may think that it's a bad situation but for him everything's good yeah so like when you look back on whatever you've done or whatever you've achieved and how you got there there is that sort of moment that when you were going through that hardship you picked up the opportunity and you got to where you are today yeah you know so absolutely yes. amazing so coming back to you, your uh, professional career i mean you uh, you went to university you studied uh, uh, business acumen and business management uh, what you did how was it getting out of university and then applying for your first job and 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 what did you go through at that point was it really easy to get into the career path that you wanted that you chose or did you face hardships there as well um i 
Not really, no. I, I was very, very blessed to actually never do unqualified work, even though I was ready to do and willing to do unqualified work, such as perhaps going and get a job at, at a shop or something like this. But I remember uh, I, I, got married, I got married when I was very young. I was 21 years old. And uh, when I moved to the place where my husband was living um, as a young family, I started looking for a job. I, w I just finished um, my first year of university and I was in the second one. And I had um, some, some time, some free time. So I wanted to support the family in getting a job. And I couldn't get a job. And I was saying, well, here I am speaking four languages, having a degree. Well, I was studying to become an accountant. You mentioned four languages. Um, I mean, English, obviously, one of them. And then the three. Yes, I speak, I speak um, English, uh, Romanian, Russian, and Ukrainian. And I speak wow. a bit of French, so four and a half, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's so, amazing. And you, you learned that all at school? Or, or, or did you take courses for those? Uh, I, I obviously I, I learned uh, French and English in um, in school, uh, but um, Russian and Romanian is something and Ukrainian is something that I I, I learned to speak um, um, in my family. Okay. So I was I was born in a Russian Ukrainian family, and then I done my studies in Romania. So I kind of like had to learn Romanian as well. Okay. So yeah, as, as, and I, as I was saying, um, I was starting to become an accountant, and I couldn't find a job, and so. Um, at some point, I just made um, a vision of me getting a good job. And I then I had this dialogue uh, in my head uh, that was say, going something like this. Well, you don't have really enough qualifications, but I really want to get a job. And can it, it, it's not possible because, um, you know, nobody's going to hire you because as an accountant because you ha don't have the qualifications, don't know a great deal. Anyway, so this has been ongoing for a couple of weeks until I decided that I'm going to get a job, a qualified job. I don't know how, but I really am just, you know, I've made a decision that I, I'm going to get a job. And somebody called me and um, they invite, somebody who, my friend of mine, she was working for this, this um, gentleman and she said, hey, you're an accountant, aren't you? And I said, well, not quite. I'm starting to become one. And she said, well, uh, my boss is looking for an accountant. Would you like to come in for an interview? I, I recommend uh, you to him. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't know anything. And he said, it doesn't matter, just come for an interview. And our interview went something like this. He said, hi, my name is whatever his name, right? I said, yeah, I'm, I introduced myself. And he said, are you an accountant? I said, no, um, I'm, I'm starting to become one. And he said, do you know anything in accountancy? I said, I know how an invoice look like, but not much more than that. <laughs> and he looked at me uh, and, sa and said, Can, are you a fast learner? And I said, yeah, I'm pretty fast learner. I would say that. And he said, okay, great, you're hired. So... Uh, because we have um, a chief accountant and, and you're just going to study from her. Okay. And I had all of a sudden like my own office with beautiful views. Um, it was just, you know, insane. And, and, I, and I, you had still not graduated from university. You were still in your second no, year. I was still in my second year and in a new country and a new place where I wow. didn't really know many people. And uh, that just go to show. But the interesting fact here was that that particular, particular thing, um, experience was such a great benchmark for my entire life and to be honest with you um when i started my own business i'm just like it's a very interesting story and i would like to share this with sure, you because it goes do. kind of hand in hand with the uh, with this when i had my second baby which was uh, five years ago um after he was born um i kind of decided well obviously i went on maternity leave and when he was nine nine weeks old i've um decided to, not nine months, sorry, nine months old, I decided not to go back to work. Although it was a lovely work, I was an operational director for an IT company, it was, it was a good job and I enjoyed doing it, but I decided not to go uh, to my work. And when I was deciding not to go, whether to go or, no, or not, I basically it had pretty much the same dialogue, but a slightly uh, different level. And um, the dialogue went something like this. Well, you have the security, you have two small children, you have security, you have a, a, a paid job, um, you know, it's, it's secure and certain. You won't have to, you know, question the following day where your money is going to come. You don't really know many people um, because I was living outside of London. I didn't know anybody from outside from my work. I didn't yeah. have any time to socialize because yeah. I had another three years old. So there is like no, no network whatsoever. So how are you going to get a business or how, what are you going to do? And uh, I'm, I was thinking about perhaps uh, moving to London to, for another corp more corporate job. And then I said, okay, well, that doesn't matter. Let me just make a list of things that I really do want, be, you know, forgetting about how I'm going to get it. So I made a list. I made a list of um, all sorts of things that I would like to, to do. How many, how, many, as... how, many, how many things did you have in that list? I had quite a few. It was very detailed list. It was a I couple mean, of numbers, pages. numbers, would you be able to number them? Like 1 to 50 or 20? Yeah, probably 30? something around, around 50. Yeah, something wow. around 50. 
which would probably even more. So it, it's question on that. The... Have you achieved those 50 so far or you're still going through it? Let me tell you. So let me tell you. So I had, I had stuff like uh, people I would like to interact, uh, things that I would like to do, uh, countries I would like to visit, um, the uh, setup of how I'm traveling, the lifestyle I'd like to achieve, the clothes I would be wearing, uh, the way I would look, the where people would look that I would be working with, the all the places that I would go and all these sort of things. And I have achieved every single one. And let me tell you another story. When I came uh, first to the How Ukraine, long did that take you? Um, well, four years, three years. Wow. Yeah. 50 it, things to do list and you've achieved all yes. of them. You're like, yes, my, well, because... you're like the number one uh, person that's come on here and has said yes. that I've achieved yeah. everything that I wrote down. Absolutely amazing. Oh, yes. A hundred percent. It was was less than that because that list has evolved so much uh, from, from since then. Obviously, it is always evolving because we are evolving as individuals, we are, right? Absolutely. We never reach never reaches as long as we keep that humbleness and resilience you know there is no um this growth is so so enjoyable but what happened with that list um i just read it and i said okay well there is no way anybody is ever going to offer me a job to do this much for this much money and then i said well i'm just going to create it for myself and it's exactly what i've done i've created it for myself and four years and ago works. you started your own business and, and that's yes. what you're doing today from, from from the back of my garage no i don't i don't do that business anymore because that evolved to other greater things but uh, that business was something that i started from the back of my garage with a nine months old baby and a three years old daughter yeah i can and, see um, i can i can see a jeff bezos walking in the next few years i guess <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> Um, so coming back to what you what you started your business as, and you mentioned that you're a business uh, strategist. What does that mean? Yes. What 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 do you do? I mean, do you go out and you speak to businesses, business owners, and you strategize their uh, uh, way of working, the team, the way they think? What what can you take me through what you involve yourself with when you are advising someone on their business strategy? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, business strategy is all about creating a plan to scale up the business in the most sustainable and efficient way. Now, I am a great advocate of efficiency in business because many people do have so many assets that they are underutilizing uh, or when even worse, they're not even aware that they do have those assets. And so my job is to actually utilize those assets in the most efficient way to bring them the, the biggest revenues and the most sustainable growth in the most um, in the fastest way and um, we, what we do this with uh, how we achieve these things is by leveraging the assets prioritizing things that they already have pinpointing the gap between what they need and, um, and what they already have and making a little bit of plan breaking down on how we get go and get those assets and um, this is one part, but most, the biggest part um, is mindset. So I do work a great deal on their mindsets because, as I said um, at the beginning of this conversation, I have a great, a great passion for psychology. I've been studying it for over 10 years now and recently I've enrolled um, at a course with Harvard for neuroscience wow. just, to understand, just to understand better the, the extent of how human brain works. I understand this very well from spiritual How does uh, a human brain aspect. work? Oh, nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's, um, you know, it just in, in a couple of sentences, I would say that it's divided between conscious mind and subconscious mind. And subconscious mind is where we have stored all those patterns of behavior that dictate our behavior and how we think, how we act, um, how we, and obviously that dictates the results that we ultimately have in our lives. And so that's why the mindset and working on your mindset is so, so important. When I say mindset, it's not about happy, clappy thing and affirmations every morning in the, in the mirror. It's not that at all. What I mean by that is actually diving deep in the core of your psychology, of your subconscious mind, uh, as I said, where your, all the patterns are stored and understanding the reason you behave in, this, in a particular manner. Because you see, some people are entrepreneurs, but they're not happy being entrepreneurs because Somewhere in their mindset, in their subconscious mind, there there are some clashes of interest where the norm is, you know, around money, for example, is that there's not never enough and you have to work super hard. And therefore, they find themselves working 24-7 
and forgetting the very reason that they started their business in the first place of actually getting the f- more freedom, freedom freedom and money yes, yep. and lifestyle right so so i work on that and and it ga- it goes um very deep down into uh, some traumas and when i say traumas i don't mean uh, obvious traumas because we undergo so many subtle traumas that we're not aware of and those uh, obviously go into our subconscious mind creating beliefs limiting beliefs that ultimately will then affect the quality of our lives and this is where i work a a great deal on as well so we would die i would sit with my client and we'll dive exactly and uh, this is this would be the premises of our work and then we will move on a strategy because unless you unless you you address the issues the core issues right the cause of of the any issue you know, there is no reason really why you would be able to, why would you, why would you spend um, any energy and time to actually address anything else, such as, you know, business, um, whatever, sales and stuff like this. Because I believe personally that once you solve your things, your things in your mind and you have the right mindset for growth, for abundance, then this is how sales happen. This, that, this is but how- But do you think we can, we can, we can, we can solve everything that's going on in our mind constantly or, you know, it's like, a day's worth of job, whatever you're thinking about, get that straight, get that done, and then move on to the next day. Is it like a gradual process or no? Once you set your mindset right, then you can move on in life until you start thinking again. I mean, how how would you define it? Well, that's a very, very complex question in itself because I don't think there is a right and a wrong thing because as you, as you can appreciate, every single person goes through a great variety of um, things in life, issues in life since they were born and up until the age when they started their business and so i would say that it depends on on the quality of their life beforehand um but my goal is uh, obviously to make people to be to, to show people that they can be happy uh, be do and have whatever they want in in an ethical way and so um and so i believe the way we work we would under you know we would, so some people would say let's say they would have um not a very good relationship with money and they would have all sort of limiting beliefs around money. And this is why they kind of scale. When, no matter what they do, they just cannot go beyond the barrier. You know, they're successful and all. Some people um, believe that they have to work really, really hard to get money. And then again, that's, that's something that's not, not necessarily have to be this way because their family needs them. You know, uh, whenever business is in detriment to their family, their quality of their relationships with other people, I think this is not quite the right Do you right think personal thing. life affects the business life? Well, I think this is this is where happiness comes from. You have to have a balance. You have to have a balance between between your wealth, your your health, your relationship, and your spirituality. This, if you ask me, I believe these are your four pillars of uh, of well being and happiness in life. So as long as a person can can find a balance, um, then they they will be happy. Uh, but the, this balance c- comes from within. Now, uh, my expertise lies more on um, on business and, and wealth because this is what i do and this is what i've been yep, studying extensively yep, yep. in terms of strategy and business consultancy but equally uh i do i do go through all of other three because then uh, it's important to understand that business does not have to have priority in life and um again people need to rem- remember why they started the business in the first place so we we kind of like go and and get that balance and once the balance is is clear you know it's it's obviously it's an ongoing work you can't just have a balance in in a one hour session but it's they have clarity and once the awareness is raised it's a great great premise to actually start uh, and scale up any any aspect of your life and then we focus on business and this is the most efficient way to actually scale up from Rather that than, place i i, I think i think for obviously that's amazing advice that you're giving your clients in terms of business strategies. But then what you're also doing is I think you're a business psychologist that you understand (laughs) the person's mindset to accelerate them in achieving their goals. That's absolutely amazing. So that's one part of your business. You are also a property entrepreneur, property developer. You raise funds for development. How do you go about managing when you're dealing with people and then you're managing your own projects in terms of property. And how did you get started with property? Was that like, was that in the four year plan that you did or was that already <laughs> before the four year plan that you uh, uh, yeah. achieved your property sort of investment goals? Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't quite in the, in, the, in my, uh, in my plan at all because I didn't really know what property does and what it is all about. Um, 
but what happens, I've, I've started a business, uh, my first business was uh, creating all these marketing packages for real estate developers. So we would create these CGI's and uh, virtual reality tours and, and things. Yep, yep, exactly. yep, yep. And so it took me probably like um, seven months to get my big clients, uh, clients where, which from there scaled up. And then um, I won an award for this business and I was able to travel uh, everywhere like with this business uh, looking for clients and leads. And this is how I actually grew my network. I just I was not aware of this is what I was doing, but because a lot of people, you know, I would I would start these relationships with so many uh, entre other entrepreneurs in the property sector, and then you know you'd uh, you'd hear people looking for money or looking for deals, and somehow I would always know either or either people with money who'd look to invest in deals or people who'd be selling and and from the other you, side. You, so would, you would put you would put both together, kind of thing. Yep. Oh yes, yeah, absolutely. And then from there, yeah. I I decided I I saw an opportunity that I actually can do this uh, as a business. So from there, yes, I've been involved in, in several projects uh, by raising funds and also brokering deals, um, bigger developments, um, so all all sorts of things. And from there, um, some of the deals did not go ahead. So I I, I learned that some of the big because I was um, my, the emphasis was on the bigger deals, and um, at some point I was. Uh, Quite frustrated because you would be, for example, I, I had um, a client in Qatar who was trying to source a portfolio of hotels, of hotels, which I did. I sourced that for, for them, and they changed their mind. And then um, I had another client who wanted a to move their HQ to London to Mayfair, and they gave gave me a very specific criteria that we want uh, our building to be this big, this is the the requirements, and and this little square in Mayfair, go and get it. So I got I got and got it for them, and then they changed their minds as well. So it was just very very frustrating in terms of you know the amount of effort that you put in um, to to do a deal like that. Yeah, it, and and I felt that regardless of the fact that the commission was so great, <laughs> um, I, I I decided that I should probably not not go ahead and do this for the rest as, as solely because it was just very frustrating and it was just um, quite self destructive as well. Yeah. Yep. So I slightly, I slightly changed my strategy, and although I still keep those contacts quite close to me, so I still help people raise funds and things like this, but I, uh, I decided to start doing my own developments. And um, then COVID came, and um, that didn't really go very well. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I just found um, a property club in Saint Albans, and we, we are a lovely community. I'm so proud of what we've achieved. Yes, you're, uh, for just... you mentioned that you're a founder of the uh, Saint Albans Property Club. Uh, is that I'm, like yes. a networking event? And, and, and it's yes. like, I'm sure currently it's like an online uh, networking event. And I, yeah, I, would, I, would, I would love to be a part of it one day. So uh, do send me an yeah, invite when you're doing it. Yes, absolutely. Well, actually, it's, uh, it, it is a networking event. It is an independent one. Uh, and uh, the premises for, for that was that um, I really wanted to bring together the same room pro uh, professionals from public and private sector within property industry. So uh, we would have, it's it's quite high-end uh, events. It's not uh, just, you know, you wouldn't have um, people who have a very small portfolio of um, HMOs, for example, presenting. So we would have people who are... Um, developers, investors, big, you know, big like developers. big developers. Yeah, got you. Yeah. So we had we would have people who are who, who are developing in uh, you know would have turnover over ten million so or so, and uh, also we would have people from private, uh, public sector. So we had people like um, Homes England presenting. Wow. Um, we had uh, people uh, like um, um, heads of planning departments from local councils and things wow. like this. So it was it just it just I wanted to create a platform where. You know how we, as developers, we always have, um, we're not questions. happy about how... Yep, absolutely. Yes, and we're not very happy how, how planning department is handling our, our things. Whereby what I, I decided to do, I thought that if we can bring both sectors in an impartial environment and have drinks together and actually just have a conversation, I think that would just liaise the business. And we, because you see what happens, we both have the same goals. Developers want to build more houses. Planning department wants Want more, more houses. houses, exactly. Exactly, and somehow in between, the goal is common, but it, the, the route to, towards it different. has so many hurdles. Yes. So because I the said, developers I... want more homes on their piece of land, and yes. planning councils want the exact homes that they can sort of manage in terms of, yeah. you know, they're always looking for that safety aspect when, when they give that planning. Uh, you know, once I was um, showing around a development site to uh, one of my clients, and the first question he asked is, 
there is no way a fire brigade can get through this road. So I don't know how <laughs> they've, uh, how they're going to apply for planning. So I was like, does a fire brigade matter that much? And of course it does, because if there's a fire, how are people going to get out? How, how is that fire brigade going to get in there? So yes, yeah. it does. Uh, I can see how planning commissioners and planning consultants sort of narrow down the amount of properties that a developer can get on their property, uh, on, their, on their land side. Um, you're also a lecturer at the University of Westminster. How is it teaching kids? I mean, older kids. You know, actually, some of them are actually older than me. No way. <laughs> Which is, yeah, because it's a master's degree. Yeah, some, some of them are older than me. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty great. Uh, and uh, again, you know, because I'm a guest lecturer, I choose the subject. They would give me some guidance as to what, they, what I would like to, to, what they would need ideally me to kind of like uh, um, touch on. But uh, uh, it's a great way because my um, objective, very similar to yours, is spreading this, this uh, you know, go get your dreams sort of thing and idea and vibe. And um, it's amazing. It's really great because in the end of, the, uh, in the end of your, your lecture, you would have people changing their perception about business, about their careers. Because you see, we are so uh, conditioned by society these days and this applies to children which worries me uh, a lot and also young young people uh, whereby we are led to think that the prog the natural progression in career goes like you have to go to school you have to go to university you have to get in the middle whatever not like it's very high just in middle something then middle management and then eventually when you're 60 years old you may or may not become a ceo or something like that whereby my my uh, um goal and absolute dream would be that every single person young or old would realize they have a power to dream whatever they want and achieve absolutely. those dreams absolutely and so this is exactly what and and, and you see sorry i'm interrupting you but yep. let me just touch on this it's a very interesting psycho psychological thing and i think it's important to mention it here whenever we uh, you know like for example a person can um, hear that hey yeah you can dream and you can d discover and you can become whatever you want but unless your brain accepts that as a possibility it doesn't matter how much times you hear this, how many times you hear this. It doesn't matter how many times you're telling this yourself for affirmations and happy copy stuff. It doesn't matter how many times, how many brilliant and super wise people would come and tell you this. You are not going to get there because your brain does not accept this as a possibility. So number one priority, and this is what I teach people generally for our strategy sessions, is if you have a goal, your number one priority is have doing your sort of internal work and make your, your brain accept this as a possibility, and then sky is the limit. So what I do with it, because I have this understanding of psychology, what I do with my sessions is kind of like show them a little bit of case studies mm. of how you can achieve from nowhere to somewhere. And then once they see it, there is a framework, there's a, there's a point of reference in their brain, their mind, that, hey, somebody could, could, have, could, do, could do it, so I can see that this is not something extra. It's not, it's, it hasn't been a royal family or anything like that. So I can, I can resonate with this, and this, this is the moment where my brain accepts that as a possibility. And this is when internal work kind of starts then. So um, that's, that's, uh, that's what I do in terms of um, lecturing. That is absolutely amazing. And thank you so much for joining me today sharing all that knowledge in terms of how you go about and you help business owners, individuals in achieving their goals and university students as well. Absolutely amazing. It's been a positive, uh, uh, positive live session throughout. And I always end my live sessions on a positive note. Um, but I am going to still ask you this that we've gone through a lot of negative sentiment in, in the last eight, nine months, whatever it's been. And a lot of people have been bankrupt, been made redundant, lost their jobs, lost their incomes. What positive advice would you like to share with the world today so that they can take that on board and move forward in life and achieve yeah. the goals that they've dreamt of like you did? Okay. I think it's all about a, a matter of perspective. So you change your perspective, you change your reality. You see, you change your perspective, you change your reality. And uh, I think uh, it's, it's very, very sad uh, this time that we're going through. And I have complete understanding of people who have been working very hard for the past years, 
all their lives, they just lost everything in the blink of an eye. But it's always a uh, matter of perspective. There is always a way um, to do something, to do something new, to do something innovative. You just Absolutely. need to change the way that you, how you look at things, and then your creativity will flow, and so will your results in business. Absolutely. I mean, I was I was listening to a I was listening to a podcast yesterday, and uh, one of the guys who was talking in there was saying that in the next ten years we're going to become a generation of freelancers, like throughout. Yes, yeah, true. <laughs> so, um, yes. absolutely amazing chatting to you, knowing about yourself, knowing what you do, and how you've achieved what you've achieved, and it's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for joining me today, Vera. No problem at all. It was my pleasure. Thank you for having Super. me. Super. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. 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 So that was Vera, who is a business strategist, a book author. Also, she runs her uh, St. Albans Club in terms of dealing with uh, property development, planning, all that kind of stuff that looks after property in terms of building property and also a university lecture. Super amazing individual. Thank you to Vera for joining me today. Thank you to all the viewers that tuned in. It's been an absolute pleasure. I shall see you again on my live session tomorrow. See you then. Bye-bye.